So something about me is that I'm a lifelong gamer. I started out with an Atari 2600, my dad got a Commodore 64, and I've worked my way through almost every video game system, and even today, I still play modern video games. I also enjoy board games and have an incredible collection of board games. I even bought a game table so that I could have my friends over and play these games. Now the interesting thing is when I was running a coding boot camp, across three physical locations, we started having weekly game nights and students and alumni were welcome to come together and play board games, card games, video games, and it was mostly for fellowship. But the thing I noticed is that collectively, the majority of students really enjoyed games of some kind and games of complexity. I'm not talking about Monopoly. I'm talking about games like Settlers of Catan and Dominion and things like that. Over time, I've developed this theory that there is a correlation between the meta skills that are involved in gaming and the skills that are involved in programming. So I'm gonna lay out several reasons why I think these two are linked and why if you're a gamer and you enjoy gaming, maybe you should try out programming. I'm Eric Wise from Skill Foundry, where we teach people how to code the right way. The first thing that gamers and programmers have in common is problem solving and critical thinking with a dash of creativity. I always like to tell my students that on the whole, computers are actually pretty dumb. There are only so many tools in the toolkit that you can reach for. It's how you combine those tools and the order in which you combine them and bringing things together in interesting ways that allows you to solve problems and debug your code. And in gaming, one of the best examples I can think of this is the classic video game Portal. In Portal, players are given a gun that creates portals and they use physics-based approaches to solve puzzles that are given to them by a rogue AI named GLaDOS. And just an aside here, GLaDOS is one of the greatest video game villain characters ever written. So if you've never seen Portal or played Portal, I highly recommend checking it out or even watching videos because it's really entertaining. But regardless, in programming, a language like C Sharp, there are less than a hundred keywords available in that language. And you can build incredibly complex applications using those keywords and combining concepts in different ways. Similarly in Portal, as you explore the physics engine and the Portal gun, you are able to solve problems of greater complexity by combining these concepts in new and creative ways. It's really good practice, and it actually mirrors the debugging process in programs because you're not gonna walk into a room in Portal and just immediately solve the objective. You're gonna use trial and error. You're gonna find a lot of things that don't work, and you're gonna keep cracking away at it. Similarly in programming, when you have a tricky bug that you're trying to figure out, you have to use that same trial and error approach and that persistence to crack through that problem. The next meta skill that both programmers and gamers have in common is attention to detail. Programming requires a very exacting syntax. Computers don't assume anything. You have to lay out all the steps clearly and concisely and write the code using appropriate syntax. Now jumping over to gaming, let's talk about a card game. Let's talk about poker. In poker, skilled players not only need to pay attention to their own cards in the community and all the odds involved with that, but they also need to carefully observe their opponents. They're looking for their tells, their betting patterns, any small detail that will give them information for the slightest advantage that they can ride to success. So next I wanna talk about patience, perseverance, and pattern recognition. Now in programming, we've already talked about it a little bit, but debugging and finding working solutions requires patience and perseverance. You are rarely, especially early on in your programming journey, going to write perfect code the first time. And you're rarely going to be able to solve a bug on the first attempt. This is normal, but there are people out there who get very frustrated and they quit and they don't persevere 
and they get angry and then the anger clouds their thoughts and they don't make logical decisions. So patience and perseverance is something you need to develop. Now on the pattern recognition side, there are many acceptable public design patterns for building applications. And beyond that, there are patterns that aren't formal, but they're patterns that you're going to notice. Like for example, if you're working with a database using code, it doesn't really matter if the database contains insurance information or financial information or retail information, you will find that the pattern of storing and retrieving data safely is the same no matter what kind of application you are building. Similarly, you will develop concepts and ways of doing things in your application that you can apply across many broad scenarios. Remember what I said, there's not a lot of keywords in these programming languages, but how you combine things and being able to notice things that are useful across domains is a key part of being a successful programmer. And it's something that you're gonna build it with experience over time. Now, if we're going to talk about patience, perseverance, and pattern recognition, I'm gonna have to jump over to gaming and I'm gonna have to talk about games like Dark Souls and Elden Ring, which by the way, the type of gamer I am, I have beaten those games. And I, let me tell you, patience, perseverance, and pattern recognition is the name of those games. Now, for those of you who don't know those games, I'll give you a brief explanation. In the Souls games, you play a character that is incredibly squishy, weak, does not take a lot of damage. And when you're fighting bosses and other enemies, if you don't know their patterns and you don't know how to react to them, they will literally kill you in one combo and then you have to start over and try the fight again. And you can go find videos about Dark Souls and Elden Ring where people die on repeat hundreds of times. They fail. And there is no better game for teaching patience and perseverance than Dark Souls and Elden Ring. Now, on the other hand, these bosses, they have very specific patterns and very short windows often for exploiting those patterns weaknesses. And the players that can learn to do that, they're very successful in those games and they can usually beat them. But if you lack the patience and you lack the ability to really study your opponent's mechanics, you will not have success in those games. Now, the last meta skill I wanna discuss is the ability to keep the big picture and the small details in your mind at the same time. In programming, you have to decompose problems and large processes into single lines of code. And while you're writing those small details, you need to be mindful of how other pieces of the application are going to interact with those details. And the best programmers that I work with are able to juggle those two concepts effortlessly. Now, again, this is something that's gonna come with experience as a programmer, but the better you get at holding big picture and small detail in your head and making them work together, the more effective you are going to be as a programmer. Now in gaming, this is where strategy board games really shine. Games like Settlers of Catan, and Dominion and Terraforming Mars. These are all games that play out over a significant period of time, 45 minutes to a couple hours. And during those games, you have to be mindful of the overall objective of winning the game and paying attention at a macro level to what your opponents are doing. But then because you have these rounds where you have to take these turns, you're juggling the micro details of taking those turns and making sure that each turn is optimized towards the macro goal of winning the game. Do you have to be a gamer to be a good programmer? And the answer is no. There are plenty of programmers I know who are successful professionals who don't care about gaming at all. 
But what I have seen in teaching hundreds of learners over the years and interacting with them is that there is a correlation between the meta skills that games teach and the meta skills that are useful in programming. So if you are a gamer and you're interested in programming, I suggest that you give it a shot. So to wrap things up, I'd love to hear in the comments about any other games or activities that either inspired you to become a coder or you think have made you a better coder by developing these or other meta skills. Let me know, happy to respond, and frankly, I'm looking for some ideas of some new games to add to my collection. Until then, happy coding.